Right, let's look at thin film interference. Now I have three layers here, uh, air, oil and water. The refractive index of air is 1.0, oil is 1.45, water is 1.33. So I have a ray of light coming in and this is an incident, incident ray. So at the first boundary, the air oil boundary, there will be a light that is reflected. So this is the reflected light, I call it R1. And if I move on, some of the light at this boundary will be refracted. So it would look something like that. And this second boundary, the oil water boundary, will also experience a ref refraction as well as reflection. So some light will be reflected and some would be refracted into the water here. All right. So let's analyze. At the first boundary, the light that is reflected is R1, but we notice that there is also the light that is reflected here from the second boundary. And this I call it R2. And we notice that this light will eventually meet at infinity. That's where our eyes are when we see the interference between R1 and R2. So let's analyze that the first boundary, the air oil boundary. Now this is from a optically lesser dense medium into an optically denser medium. So if you recall, we mentioned about a pulse moving towards a pole with a fixed end. Now this fixed end is similar to that of a denser medium. And by denser, I'm referring to optically denser medium. So the pulse, when it reaches the optically denser medium, this fixed end will cause the pulse to be flipped back as it returns. And on that same note, we were also discussing about uh, and that is not fixed. So we have another pulse coming in and this end is free to move up and down. So it will not restrict the up down movement. So the pulse that goes back would also be the same. So in that sense, the red pulse with the fixed end experiences a phase change. of pi radian. For the blue pulse, free N, it is when the denser medium meets a optically lesser dense medium. So there is no phase change. So on that note, we analyze the two boundaries. So at the first boundary, where the light enters from a optically lens, less dense medium into an optically denser medium, it will experience a phase change. So light ray R1 experiences a phase change of pi radian. Like R2, it moves from an optically denser into an optically lesser dense medium and this ray does not experience any phase change.
all right and so based on that let's add some terms here I'm going to use the letter T to denote the thickness of the oil and we note that ray R2 would have moved a distance of 2t approximately more than R1. So you must imagine that the ray coming in is actually more perpendicular to the surface of the oil than it is inclined as shown. So my diagram is essentially exaggerated. So when it moves, the, the extra distance covered by R2 would be effectively 2t. So 2t would be the path difference between R1 and R2. So when we look at um, constructive interference or destructive interference, we are concerned with this path difference. So let's discuss for destructive interference. We would imagine the path difference to be lambda over 2. So if we start off from infinity where the eye level is, back track to the air oil boundary, R1 already experiences a phase change of pi radian. So at that boundary, effectively both R1 and R2 are already on course with a pi radian phase difference uh, for destructive interference. So the only way for R2 to maintain uh, without a phase change is if the path difference 2t is maintained at m lambda. And notice the lambda here is actually the lambda of the light in oil. Note, this lambda oil is not the same as the lambda of the light in air. So let's make sense out of this. So recall we have refractive index of oil. Let's just argument sake put it that way, refractive index of air. So we recall n is equals to speed of light in vacuum over speed of light in oil. And for air will be speed of light in vacuum over speed of light in air. So rearranging cancel C I get for air is 1.0 so I get this divided by 1.0 and this is V of air over V of oil. So V is actually equals to F lambda. So this is lambda of air over F lambda of oil. So rearranging, I get lambda of oil, F cancels, lambda in air over N refractive index of oil. So I insert this equation, I get 2t equals to m lambda of light in air over refractive index of oil. And rearranging, I get this, where m is my order of interference. So it takes on an integer value. So this equation essentially gives the equation needed for destructive interference where the light cancels each other. R1 and R2 will meet and uh, have a destructive interference. What about constructive interference?
So for constructive interference, again the path difference must be, in this case, the starting point is really phase difference of pi radian. So when they meet, in order to have constructive interference, there must be a phase difference of another pi radian. And if I may, I express the path difference as m plus half multiplied by the wavelength of light in oil. This will ensure that the wavelength, the path difference, will always in intervals of half a wavelength, 3 over 2 wavelength, 5 over 2 wavelength, so on and so forth. So I insert equation 1 to change the wavelength of light in oil to wavelength of light in air. And I bring the refractive index across. I get the equation as shown. So this is the equation for constructive interference for thin film. So with that, I hope you gain a better understanding on the equation for uh, thin film interference. Thank you.